Hey everyone, I'm Steve from GamersNexus.net and this is your weekly hardware news recap. First up for this week is the patent lawsuit between Nvidia and Samsung that is still progressing, not a big surprise though. And if you recall one of our last updates, Nvidia actually lost its case against Samsung and Nvidia is appealing that decision. So the quick history here is that Nvidia issued a patent lawsuit against Samsung for alleged GPU patent technology infringement. And Samsung then countersued NVIDIA on four counts of alleged patent infringement. But from Samsung's side, they were alleging that NVIDIA had infringed upon intellectual property involving memory technology, memory chips. And these were, of course, used in GPUs. So both major companies have been fighting each other to try and stop or prohibit sales of one device or another from either company. And that would be a pretty big, somewhat vicious move if it actually played through on either side. But so far, NVIDIA has lost its claims against Samsung and actually NVIDIA had one of its patents invalidated in the process. Samsung had its four claims looked at by a judge and so forth. And the first one fell through, the second two were ruled a mistrial. And then the last patent infringement count that Samsung was bringing to levy against NVIDIA was ultimately ruled on by a jury, which found that just recently, NVIDIA was not infringing on any patent technology, which of course made NVIDIA very happy as they note in their statements. So, so far, the main thing going on right now is an appeal process between NVIDIA and Samsung where NVIDIA is trying to appeal their decision where they were pursuing Samsung over patent infringement for GPU technology. So that is where things stand right now. Next up is a pretty major announcement from Micron, which is one of the world's leading memory manufacturers. They work on SSDs and on DRAM and also on VRAM. And this news pertains to the VRAM market. So Micron has its G GDDR5X memory, which is not the same as GDDR5 and it is not the same as HBM. So there's GDDR5, in the middle is 5X, and on the far end of speed, is HBM and HBM version two is coming soon, sometime this year likely with Pascal and the other architecture updates. So the deal here with GDDR5X is it's a bit faster, actually 47% faster than GDDR5 non-X. And that is because the non-X version has a throughput of eight gigabits per second, whereas the new GDDR5X version of the GPU memory is actually at 13 gigabits per second, quite a speed increase, again, 47%. So that will be major for the GPUs that don't feature HBM or HBM version two for reasons like cost. And HBM is a bit too expensive right now to be hitting the lower end market, maybe even the mid range markets. We don't know exactly how much it costs, but it's certainly too much for low end. And in these certain applications, the memory used will either be GDDR5 or Micron's brand new GDDR5X which will be a bit faster, be cheaper than HBM, and actually GDDR5X is a lower power consumption as well. So it's good all around. It's just a matter of implementation at this point and mass production is already rolling out. Micron has already tested its initial samples and they've claimed that things are looking good so far. We've got a quick news item on the gaming front. So this one is about Unity, which of course is one of the most popular and prolific game engines on the market. It is competing most directly with CryEngine and that's made by Crytek, and Unreal Engine made, of course, by Epic Games. So these are the sort of the big three engines right now. And just as a quick aside, Lumberyard, which is an Amazon engine that is sort of ill-fatedly named, Amazon Lumberyard isn't exactly the greatest selection of two words that you could put next to each other, but that is another new engine that is based on CryEngine. So we've got four, but three major engines that have some tenure in the industry, that's Unity, Unreal and CryEngine. And the news item here is that Unity Engine has just added support officially for Steam or Valve VR, and that would include the HTC Vive, which is manufactured by HTC. They use their production lines and their advantage with certain technologies like displays, and it is engineered by Valve, who have built up this contract. So the Vive will be supported through Unity, and that is good news for game development all around because Hopefully this helps the major issue that we've talked about with virtual reality, which is a content problem. This was further solved in another news item from the past week by assistance from Gabe Newell from Valve. So in a recent Steam event, a Steam VR event, the HTC Vive was provided for free to many, many developers. And this was a gesture on Valve's part 
to try and improve the content upon initial launch, which will hopefully trickle down to the consumer in a way that makes Steam VR or the HTC Vive a more immediately viable product upon purchase. In partnership with AMD HP, the Hewlett Packard company that produces laptops and computers has started to move FreeSync technology into its AMD APU laptops. So any A-series laptop that HP sells, or at least most of them going forward, will be featuring some version of FreeSync. This is for a few reasons. Now one, of course they're pushing the adaptive synchronization angle where you get this adaptive frame rate synchronization thing going on if you are a gamer. But the main news item here probably for the laptop argument of things is that it's reduced power consumption. So if you have an adaptive sync technology like FreeSync, there should actually theoretically be slightly lower power consumption that could impact battery life. We have not validated this internally. I would love to do that. But of course, until that time, I can't really say for sure what the real world impact is, but that is certainly the advertised impact from both HP and AMD. The last news item is a pretty major one. This is about CPU architectures. Of course, I'm talking about Zen. And the news here is that CERN, the European research firm that works with nuclear and particle acceleration and all these different types of scientific technologies, they had a conference where they talked about Zen. And if you're wondering why, it's because these processor architectures are pretty critical to the advancement of scientific research. And they're normally looking at things that are very heavily threaded, looking at 64 or even in some cases hundreds or thousands of cores and threads. But on our end, we also benefit from the advancements of new architecture. So relevant to us as gamers, the major Zen updates that were announced recently are an alleged 40% improvement in IPC, which is an aspect of processing that Intel currently excels at, which directly relates to gaming performance for the most part. And that's because a lot of games are very heavily single threaded, dual threaded, and they like those higher instructions per clock or per cycle that Intel is generally advantaged with. On the Zen, that's moving 40% forward in a good direction, hopefully to achieve some level of parity with Intel. And then the next major item is that Zen will be on 14 nanometer FinFET process, which we discussed in our AMD Polaris video live from the show floor of CES. So FinFET, just a very, very brief and quick recap. With process nodes, you have the transistors that are the item described by the nanometers. So that's sort of what we're talking about when we say 14 nanometer FinFET, we are specifically talking about the process or the manufacturing fabrication process used to create those transistors. FinFET, the word fin is as in shark fin, and that very literally means there's a fin on either side of the transistor, so you create this bucket. It's straight down on the sides and flat on the bottom, more or less. Anyway, that's sort of a very simplistic overview of it. And this means that there's less power leakage and it contains its power a bit better. All these things are beneficial, especially to AMD, who have needed the power and watt draw advantage in recent years. And that is shown on Polaris, and hopefully will be shown in AMD Zen. So Zen will be using FinFET 14 nanometer process, just like their new GPUs. And it's also theoretically got a 40% IPC increase from the previous architecture, which would include the FX8350, for example, which is a number of years old now. So very exciting news all around if AMD can actually deliver on these things because it's been, as I said, a number of years since a major processor architecture from the company other than just more and more refreshes. And for more news, as always, subscribe to the channel, hit the Patreon link in the post video if you want to help us out directly, and I will see you all next time.